Now, if you've been skiing at Bogus Basin at any point in the last 65 years or so, and you've ridden the Deer Point ski lift up the hill, a little glance over your right shoulder, and you've likely seen how KTVB has been infiltrating your home. It's our TV tower, our transmitter. It sends our signal from Eastern Oregon all the way to, well, close to the Magic Valley. This week, it's coming down to make way for a brand new one. It's a once in a multi-generational change, but we can't appreciate where we're headed without first appreciating how we got here. The roots of television run deep in Idaho. First planted in Rigby by farm boy Philo Farnsworth in 1922, when at the age of 16, he came up with the idea of an image dissector. Farnsworth's invention laid the foundation for the next generation of mass media now takes its place as a new American art and industry. Highlighted by RCA and NBC when they broadcast the world of tomorrow during the 1939 World's Fair from New York. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Two years later, I'm the Federal sorry, Communications Commission commercialized the medium. The program director and engineers prepare for their part in the broadcast. Yet television wouldn't take off until after World War II. By 1945, most major U.S. cities had a TV station and the number of homes with a television set skyrocketed from about 44,000 in 1946 to more than 4.2 million in 1949. A rise so steep, the infrastructure wasn't yet there to support it. So the FCC pumped the brakes, putting a pause on all new TV stations in 1948 in order to figure out broadcast frequencies and such, which they did by 1952, lifting the laps on television licenses. And Boise wasted little time. In March of that year, KTVB's founder, Georgia Davidson, filed for Idaho's very first TV station permit and a permit to build a transmitter. It was granted in December of 1952, and construction began on Crestline Drive in the Boise foothills. Oh, sure, Channel 7 could have started broadcasting sooner, but management wanted to wait for full power from the 400-foot tower which they did, and KIDO-TV hit the airwaves on July 12, 1953. We barely, when we turned on the switch in 1953, we barely reached pay at Idaho. So first, just not so robust, which left an opening for competitors. Channel 2 immediately, when we went there, they immediately modified their application to the FCC, and they moved up to the top of Bogus Basin which we gradually had to do, I mean, to be competitive. Within three years, the Bogus Basin transmitter was completed. It was only 226 feet tall, but when your starting point at Deer Point is just under 7,000 feet, KTVB's reach stretched in all directions. Using VHF, or very high frequency, KTVB's signal was line of sight, meaning it could be picked up if you could see the tower. The following program is brought to you in living color on NBC. A simple system that worked well for decades until the digital revolution. In 2009, KTVB's analog signal switched to digital. This is one of the biggest changes that the television industry has seen since the conversion from black and white to color. It exposed a few pitfalls with VHF, like getting a clean signal inside certain buildings, which is a bit of a problem considering inside is where you find most TVs, rendering things like rabbit ears ineffective. And that's why we're making the switch to UHF, or ultra high frequency. It's an upgrade up on the hill with a transmitter that, well, transmits UHF. Television is taking its place as another important and vital contribution to our daily lives. So our reach, it is a modern miracle, will still be the same, but our quality, you'll see, will be superior. Watch this. And science has made a reality of the age old dream of pictures from the sky. By the way, Georgia Davidson sold KIDO Radio in 1959, kept the television station, though, and then changed the call letters to KTVB, which is what we are now. And I, I hope you understand what kind of a big deal this is. Because, well, going forward, starting tomorrow, Channel 7 is still Channel 7, but we're not going to be on Channel 7, if you know what I mean. We're going to, like, 42, I think, on UHF. So this is a big deal, and it's a big deal happening tomorrow. So what does a new transmitter mean for you at home? Well, if you pick up KTVB with an antenna, either rabbit ears or on one of, the, one of those antennas on your roof, or you use a digital converter, 
After 10 a.m. tomorrow, you will need to rescan your television in order to keep seeing our best picture quality possible. If you still have the owner's manual for your TV, the instructions on how to do a rescan, well, those should be in there. Otherwise, you could probably find those instructions online. Or you could do this text us the number 321 5614. Text the word rescan to that number and we'll send a link directly to your phone. You could also visit ktvb.com forward slash rescan where we've posted some basic instructions.